Okay, we're still on our Independence Day special. Happy Independence Day to you. Thank you for staying with us. On this segment, we'll be focusing on leadership in Nigeria. The greatest challenge we're facing in Nigeria is not restructuring or insurgency or corruption or economic recession or even youth empowerment or our energy crisis, but the dearth of selfless and visionary leadership. There is a crisis of bad governance, and um, I'm being joined in the studio today by ex-governor Donald Duke. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. And Tubosu Akeju, who is a reputation manager. Thank You're you welcome. for having me. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm already looking forward to this conversation. <laughs> Happy Independence Day to you both. I think thank you. you again. OK, yeah. we'll also be talking with Professor Kinsley Mogalu. He's the former presidential candidate of the Young Progressive Party, YPP, during the show. Um, Let's, let's listen to what he has to say now. We'll just be connecting with him. OK, OK, before we get connected to him, we'll just kick off. Uh, we had a discussion off air before, uh, before now, and maybe we want to take it from there. We're trying to identify, and I liked your, your position on it, uh, Mr. Duke. You were saying something about happiness. I want you to try and frame that for us, <laughs> making happiness a goal. First of all, I disagree with you that leadership is the bane of our problem, because okay. le leadership is essential absolutely essential, but it must be within a framework, right? And um, we need to restructure our nation, and not the common parlance restructuring that, you know, tinkering with the Constitution and all that, but early on I spoke about a national goal, right? We need a national goal so that we're all going in a particular direction, and that's where the leadership now comes in. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a goal as a nation, um, the leadership will keep on, and it will change from time to time, so the leadership becomes subjective where it's taking you to. Okay. So you have a leader who comes in today and says, it's corruption and this and that. Another one comes in and says, oh, I want to eradicate an unemployment. You know, what is the national goal? Where are we going? What would we like to see ourselves 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the line as a Sorry, nation? So the question at the tip of my tongue is, who will change the structure? Is it not the same leadership? That Us. We're us. Okay, describe how that happens because a lot of people are looking to the leadership to effect a change in the same structure you're saying is not taking us to our destination. Whether we like it or not, sooner than later, we're going to have to restructure this country. And the kernel of the restructuring will not be how the pot is being shared. Mm -hmm. The kernel would have to be what is our national goal. Then everything will fall around that. So I'm not. And, you know, what we are scared of and why we have not had this constitutional restructuring is everyone is thinking, okay, if you do it, what will get to different um, component parts of the nation? Okay. That's secondary, right? What is this union all about? That's the first question we should I'll ask. I'll come back to you on that. Please. Because I'm, I like the us you said, and I want, I want you to really... <laughs> Do you say pin that down for us? But before that, would you disagree with our premise that leadership is at the heart of, uh, do you say, mismanagement of, of our country's potential? I think the first question is, what is leadership? Okay. And uh, no, I would not disagree because earlier today I did say. You would not disagree with us? Or, no. Uh, or uh, with the ex <laughs> No, I would not disagree with what he said. Okay. But I will also say that. Earlier today, I'd said that we needed a melting point. Okay. So it's just another word for the melting point is what you said, which is, what is the common goal? Okay. The melting point, we must first of all identify that thing that will unite us. You have over 200 tribes. You have about 500 languages, even though it seems like we have five major languages, because as I see, we have Yoruba, Igbo, Arusa, uh, um, Pidgin, and then we have English. But we have <laughs> all like you know. I never saw Pidgin as <laughs> so oh, well. Right. It, it is, it is. It, it is. is. It's more prevalent than English. Yes, mm -hmm. you know. And so, so if you look at it, I mean, someone said here earlier today that, oh, some of these bike men don't even understand Pidgin. Do you understand? So we'll have to classify that. But we meet that common. And if we, we have a few of those things, but we're not there yet. And we're... We, you, you have to start to look at the importance of that. If you've seen some of the things that have affected Nigerians, both the rich, the poor, the high and the low, you will see how all of us have forgotten about the tribe we've come to. When, for example, when it comes to supporting our national team, mm. it is not a matter of, oh, five people in the national team are from the northern part of the country. No, he's, who it's is a Nigerian. Yeah. It's a Nigerian team. Is he playing where? If he's not playing where, everybody will yap the person. If he's playing where, everybody will press okay, him. Okay, well, I, I, so, I, want you to, I want to give you a chance to stand on your own and maybe 
put some distance between you and the um, Mr. Duke here. Okay. Do you not feel the leadership are still going to be the ones who will help us identify this common goal? So, so I'll go back to that. Again, what is leadership and who are we even calling leaders? There's an analogy I always make. If you have a basket of 100 tomatoes, if 90 out of those tomatoes are rotten tomatoes, nine out of 10 times you go into that basket, you're going to pick rotten tomatoes. That's what it is. Okay. So the thing we have here is not the people we call our leader. There is a collective responsibility by every Nigerian to act right. And that is the challenge we have. So if that collective responsibility is what we've referred to as leadership challenge, then yes, we have a leadership challenge. That everyone, because at the end of the day, we are leaders in our own right. So you're either a father or you're a brother. There's always a leadership responsibility on you, no matter how small it is. And it starts from the small thing. Again, I can't help but say that my background is microbiology, so sometimes I sweat the small stuff. If you don't take care of the little things, you will, you will not be able to take care of it. So if you're not a good leader, when you're a class captain, for example, I'm, I'm sorry, you might not be a good leader when you become the head boy. And I'm sorry, you might not be a good leader if you become a local government chairman okay. on top of the government. Mr. Duke, maybe I, I seem to be pushing this a bit because I, I'm wondering if I'm alone in this. He used the family analogy. I can't imagine any home where the father would blame the children for not setting the right agenda, for not driving home the right ethics, for not. So let's even stay with the family agenda because I feel many people may not understand how you put an equal blame, it seems, unless I'm not getting you right, on us. When the world over, what we hear time and time again when we talk about the, the story of Nigeria is leadership mismanagement, leadership failures. Why are you not singing the same tune? Perhaps I know better, that's why. Please give us insight. I am not underscoring leadership at all. It's an incredible component, but it's not the numero uno. For me, the first thing is have a goal then get the leader who would drive the goal. Just so take the leader down for us, who will identify that goal? How, how does that goal get identified and, and set up for us? Okay, let's take his football analogy. And, and it's, a, it's a brilliant analogy. As a nation, we want to win the World Cup, right? Who sits down to tell you that what do we want to do going to the World Cup? We know we want to win the World Cup. Who's going to drive that process? So you have a team. The team has a captain. The captain is a leader. Good. Right? Now, let me, let, me, let me use a live example. In 2003, there was a match I watched. I'm not a football buff, but I happened to watch this match. I think it was between England and Norway or something. Beckham was captain then. Okay. But he was a non-playing captain. And so he was jerseyed, but he was on the, the sidelines. Side and he was running back and forth, moving players, you know, inspiring the team. At the end of the day, England won. And you know their jerseys white and all that. And he got the cup. He didn't play, but he got the cup. Okay. Okay. And all the other players were solid and all that, dirty, but he was sparkling. And what did that occur? What, what occurred to me was very simple. One, the goal was to get that cup, right? The, the leader's job thereafter was identify those who would articulate that goal. Mm -hmm. Right? Then he sat back to motivate them to ensure that they attained the goal. Okay. Okay? Now, if they didn't have a goal, if that was not the focus, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be a, a mixed match. Okay. And that's a problem we find ourselves. Okay. Sorry. Okay. That's a problem we find ourselves in Nigeria because each one who emerges a president or a governor. He's shooting says, at the wrong goalpost. No, he says, this is what I want to do. It's about him. Okay. It's not about us. So um, the current administration may talk about corruption and uh, whatever, but is that our national goal? Is that the real problem? Or is it a problem of inadequacies that breeds those things? You know, when I was governor, I said I was going to build a state based on tourism okay. and agriculture. But the real goal was create jobs for people because I thought that was what it was all about. Using tourism and agriculture was the means, the faster means of attaining the goal because the real goal is national is uh, employment and showing that every one of us is productive. You know, so let's first define what do we want to achieve because listen. How does this let you still need to help me with this? How does this let's define look like in today's? Um, 
platform. You know, here we are. Let's, let's just take where we are now. We're shooting at the wrong goalpost. How, who now takes responsibility to redirect us to the right goal? Well, we're having national conferences. People emerge from there. People come from societies and all that. You, you, you abdicate the responsibility to someone or a set of people to speak on your behalf. We right? have had conferences. Yeah, but we have not implemented them. So but who, the who point, is responsible the point I'm making, The point I'm saying is that mm -hmm. we harp too much on the structure of Nigeria, where, which is important. Okay. Right? But I'm saying let's start from what is the goal of Nigeria. The British put us together, fine. It wasn't our decision to come together. But we've now found ourselves together. I agree. What we want to do with our togetherness. Yes. Right? The Americans found themselves in a similar situation. They went looking out. They wanted freedom and mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. So their national goal was a nation free, proud, you know, the free, the free, the proud, the brave, and all that. Fine. What is ours? I agree with you. Uh, it's not oh, that I don't. Finally, you do. My, my, no, I, I, I <laughs> we're getting, we're getting well, somewhere. The reason, I'm we're getting somewhere. The reason I'm persisting is that, and, and super, so maybe you may help me here, is that I'm, I'm wanting to see realistic, uh, do you say, steps we'll take in the direction of where he's going. In, so we all agree that we're moving in the wrong direction. I think most people would agree to that. But who is responsible for turning the ship around? You know, and who is responsible for the fact that we still are moving in the wrong direction, despite lots of alarms being sounded that we're moving in the wrong direction? Um, again, I still think that. Because sorry to say. She's trying to box you. You made me to box you to <laughs> She's not good. one singular leader. No, no, permit me, permit me to box you. In some societies, further. you may be lucky to find that. Yes. You may find a Mao, for instance, or you may find a Lee Kuan Yew, for That's instance. That's the example right? that came to mind. But Nigeria, I think. Or even a Nelson Mandela. So, so I think but, but, you know, because you, you know, so, 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 so I'll let you in in a minute. I just want to let him recognize that by his own words, he's actually acceded to what I'm saying. He said, when I was governor, I said, that is someone setting the tone. So why can't we look to our leadership okay, at so, the center so, to so, do the same thing? So let me ask a question. Yes, please. When he was governor, so what has happened after? Let's not go there. Let's, no, 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 let's stay with the no, current there's, 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 there's a place I'm going. Because I'm going back to the fact that it's a collective responsibility. Mm, how so does that if, look like in If practice? all of us, and, and I'm going to tell you. Okay. So a lot of us look at, and I'm going to use um, 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 estates as the example. Okay. If we all agree. It's called Cross River. Cross River, sorry. <laughs> Cross River, Calaba came to my head. <laughs> Cross River. Mm. If we all agree that Cross River is the most, the best thing to come out of Cross River is the tourism. Excellent. So any governor that is going to come and is not going to focus on tourism, then we don't, want, the ball. We, we don't want that government, yeah. because all of us have agreed. Mm. So every governor knows that if you want to speak the language of that people, then you have to speak the language of tourism. Who is doing that? Someone has identified, but everybody has come to agree that this is the direction we're going. So the direction is very easy. But I'm with you. The direction will not be properly implemented if there's only one person driving the seat. If you look at... May I, let, me, let, me, let me just um, halt you a little bit. Somebody has to identify yes. first. No. That's really all I'm trying so, to so identify. Is a chicken and that's why I was smiling. Is a chicken and you're wrong. Is a chicken and egg. Wrong. Come on, a chicken and egg thing. Okay. So let me ask. Let's 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 take it um, global. Mm. The issue of racism was it only MLK that fought for it? Okay. That's the person we seem to speak the most about. But was it only MLK that fought for okay. it? Okay. No. You had. Um, um, uh, what's his name now? God. Loads of people. Loads and, of people. There were young MLK, Jesse Jackson. Yeah, you know, MLK the went the, 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 he was the just civil face, disobedience. He was just the face of it. He even was the face of the civil disobedience That's side it. of it. There was, um, I, I don't know why the name is keeping my head now, very popular. He was on the violent part of it and saying that no, civil disobedience. Malcolm X. Malcolm X. Malcolm X is saying no, civil disobedience is not going to get the white people to. But the, the, the goal line. was common. But the goal was the common. The goal was common. The goal was common to give you equality. See, you want to give me credit for tourism? No. Okay. Tourism is so natural in Cross River. All I did was identify. Use what you've got to get what you want. And that's why it stays. If it wasn't natural to the people, it would go with Donald Duke. Okay, let, let's, shift, let's shift the focus a bit. So why I is it that I don't we're defeating you? you <laughs> <laughs> no, we're on the same side. We're on the same side. Yes, um, we're, okay. we're all looking for what's best for oh. our nation. So okay. let's, let's continue with that um, approach. And let's say, for example, somebody identifies, because I like what you're saying. I like what you're identifying for us, that we all have to share in the vision for Nigeria. Yes. Um, but looking at where we are now, what role would you say the leadership should have as we are, you know, so that we can at least assess them based on your own definition. So I would, I would speak as, in this particular question, I'll speak first as Tubasun Akeju before I speak as a Nigerian, wow. because it's my personal opinion. Okay. My personal opinion is that gov the present leadership 
should put system and processes in place. That's my belief. Okay. So what those system and processes will achieve will be, one of them will be, can we all find a way to come together and agree that this is what we need to achieve? This is our common goal. This is our melting point. This is what makes us stronger. When we, when we list the 1,001 things that is unique about Nigeria, this top five things are the major Sorry, things. Let, let, the let's things break down the statement, can we all come together? What does that look like? Are you calling a town hall meeting? Are you, what are you doing to bring us all yeah, together to have that discussion? Yeah, and how are you yeah, able to hear from everybody yeah, and sift so uh, there will be different ways to organize that. There's the, the, all the conferences. We, we're always talking. Do you understand So that? if you were president today, you have lots I of will, conferences. So if, if, if I was president today, I will look, I will exhaust all the opportunities to get the sweet spot of the country. I've done it in my career before, where I went out and looked at what have I done I listed all the things that I've, I've done in the last five years or in the last you know, couple of years and said, which one has given me the most happiness? Which one have I succeeded the most at? And I'm looking at which one has given me the best money. There are, there are, there are models, even for companies, you, know, you use Boston metric to say, oh, where should, I give, uh, where should I give more funds to? Who should I give more attention? Who should I you know, give less attention? There will be different ways to do it. The common objective is we need to find the melting point that when I take it to everybody, everybody's going to agree that, oh, these five things are the biggest thing that we should focus on. And then we'll now build... Proceed from them. Yes, we'll now build systems so that when next, in the next 20, 30 years, that will be our focus. See, all the countries that we usually compare with Nigeria, say Singapore, Malaysia, go and look at that's what they've done. They've gone back to look at, okay, what are we going to develop this one? And then have a 20, 30 years developmental plan. Okay. That's the same thing Dubai did. Okay, well, and then they proceeded that way so that they might not have practiced democracy or they might have, they might have a pseudo democracy. But if you look at the, the underlying, maybe it's democracy or it's not, they had a plan, they had a common goal, and everybody had to fall in line with that common goal. Okay. Okay, well, but if one person wakes up and says this is our common goal, the next person is going to come and say, no, this is not our common goal. But if there's a system and process in place that allows us to arrive at that common goal, which I call the melting point, then when you want to change it, the active citizens will say, no, you can't change it. We've already okay. said this. Okay, let, let's stay with that. And we're still talking about the issue of leadership. And uh, right now we have the professor, that's uh, Mogalu on the online. We want to ask him a few questions and hear from him concerning the matter of leadership. Are we, are we through to him? Okay. Good morning. Happy Independence Day to you. I have a few questions for you. I would like to find out from you, what is it that worries you most about Nigeria? Number one is the level of poverty in Nigeria. It's alarming and it bothers me very much. Number two is whether Nigeria can, in fact, survive as a nation um, over the next several years because of the level of insecurity because of the um, uh, bottoming out of the economy because of the level of distrust and ethnic agitations uh, which i think should be channeled away from a breakup of nigeria to a rearrangement of Nigeria, some will call it restructuring, in such a way that the regions of Nigeria can have more autonomy, but we can remain as one country. Wow, you've made some very significant Probably points. Um, so <laughs> you heard what he had to say. I want to come back to you um, in the studio, Mr. Duke. What's your take on that? Well, I don't disagree with him, but what is, what is Nigeria all about? What is our goal as a nation? Right? Nations have a goal. China has a national goal. The United States has a national goal. The Russians have a national goal. What is Nigeria's goal? We can't keep on picking and choosing. We can't say there's poverty, there's this, there's that. Yes, poverty is rife. But that national goal should be so encompassing that it deals with those issues. It deals with the levels of discontent that we have in the society. And in the course of it, you would restructure for effectiveness, not because we're of different tribes. Okay, because ordinarily, if I live long enough in Sokoto, I should be a citizen of Sokoto, so it has nothing to do with tribe. The restructuring should be on the, for, to ensure that we are effective in our government and productive as a people. Okay. Okay, so what are we trying so to... So restructuring is not to favor some or no, disfavor some others? No, I agree that, yes, let people um, or component parts grow at their pace. But all that is on the face of effectiveness, okay. so that you don't, one doesn't hold back the other. Okay. But where are we going as a composite whole? 
That's what I wanted to, to, to first start from there. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't yes. have to be global dominance, right? I said earlier on before the, before the lights came on, I said happiness. We all want to be happy. If that's our national goal, what are the things that would enable us to achieve that? Mm. Okay? If you take soccer as a sport, for instance, we want to win the cup. Yes. Okay? So what do we need to put in place to achieve that? Do we need to restructure the NFA to achieve that? You know, all those things yes. come together. Yes. So first of all, as a nation, what is our goal? We don't have. Okay. And as long as we don't have a, a goal, we keep on skirting. And sorry, just mm. one more point. Okay. And that's why ECOWAS has not really worked, right? It was because we've clearly not defined what do we want to achieve with that. Okay. Well, that's interesting. You heard majorly he was talking about his concerns about poverty. Um, I'm sure, well, let me not say I'm sure. Now, let me allow you to speak for yourself. <laughs> What's your response to you see, the it, professor's position? A lot of, yes, poverty is a problem. But a lot of the problems we pick on in Nigeria are more of the symptoms. And we usually do not identify the you know, underlying problem, you know, underlying issue that is giving birth or that, you know, to those symptoms. Um, if we have a, a poverty issue in Nigeria, what has caused that? We are, you know, by GDP, we are probably the biggest <laughs> in, in Africa. Okay. And there are a lot of our sectors that is growing at rates that, you know, are unparalleled even globally. So why? Do we still have some of this problem, the inequality issue? So we have a poverty problem, yes. Okay. But what has caused it? Because this is my big concern. Again, if we do not properly understand a problem, issues. we cannot provide a sustainable solution to that problem. So what has brought us to a point where we are this poor? Once we identify that, yes, then we'll be able to properly, you know, give the solution to that problem. And it, it, it's, it's very painful when, so for example, the, 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 the NLC requested for a bigger minimum wage. All the rights are there. But I have a different opinion. Okay. Can we cut the spending of some component of the government, like the legislation? The bond is too much. Mm -hmm. We might still need that increase in salary. But you cannot, you know, like I said before, the cutting of the head is not the solution to the headache. Okay, so and identify so, the yeah, problem. So solve the real problem. Mm -hmm. This money is too much. Let's cut the waste here and there. Then you can let us to request for the increase in minimum wage. But you can't say, oh, because they're earning so much, we are also going to earn so much. By the end of the day, we will not have a country to even earn anything. From. Mm, interesting. So identify the problem and set a goal Properly. for ourselves. Um, and, but we're still maybe not in so much agreement as to who starts the goal setting. But that's okay for now. We're going to go on a brief break. We're still uh, on Plus TV Africa watching our special broadcast for Independence Day. And when we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Do stay tuned.